Okay, so I got asked to speak for five minutes on um, why I did it uh, and what next. Um, and so I guess kind of an introduction, a uh, very quick introduction to the action just for anyone that, who um, didn't come across it. Um, so in, at the end of October, beginning of November, there was um, 21 of us who um, broke into uh, West Burton gas fired power station, which is one of the, which is um, currently under construction. It's one of the newest of the new kind of dash for gas, so a whole range of gas fired power stations that are about to be built. Um, and I mean, I say we broke in. There was they had a finished building with fence, and they they just left a big hole there. So we actually just walked in. Um, <laughs> pretty uh, pretty on um, yeah, it was quite undramatic. But um, <laughs> actually, uh, so 21 people went in, um, 17 of us climbed the chimneys, um, we climbed two of the chimneys up there and we stayed there um, for uh, a week um, and we, it was kind of staggered, some people came up, down after four days, some five, some six and then some on the eighth day. Um, so that's kind of what was what we did um, and I guess why I did it, or why we did it, um, and I think for me personally, it's because I think direct action is a really important tool in our um, kind of armory in the fight against climate change. And um, secondly, because I think um, gas felt like the most strategic um, target, you know, in in the current time. I mean, I guess the kind of group of us got together who'd been, you know, who'd been active in kind of past movements, and you know, we'd all met through climate camp and stuff like that. And we all kind of sat down and looked at each other and was like, this is a disaster that there's not more happening on climate change. Um, but there isn't, you know, there was around 2010, there was 2009, 2010, there was this huge kind of you know, head of steam that got built up around the climate movement, and particularly, you know, linked to Copenhagen, which was obviously um, a bit of a, a damp squib. Um, and so we were like, you know, we need something to be happening again. What can we do? And we looked at all sorts of targets. And um, and in the end, we thought that gas, you know, gas is the new battlefield because um, we felt that um, you know the fight against kind of Heathrow, the fight against coal, had actually been won by kind of direct action movements kind of previously. Um, and gas was the new gas is the new threat. So they want to build 40 new gas-fired power stations. And so it's about. <coughs> You know, we cannot afford to have that infrastructure built because as soon as that infrastructure is in place, um, we are then tied into that, uh, you know, that mechanism of producing fuel for another 40 years. Um, and obviously gas is, uh, gas is a disaster for a number of reasons. And I guess this group of activists kind of came at it both from an environmental and a fuel policy point of view. So, there's, you know, there's a kind of double, um, there's the kind of a double element to the gas argument in that you know, gas isn't green, it's still a fossil fuel. Once you've taken into account um, extraction and transportation, it's almost as dirty as coal. Um, and we, uh, and it's, you know, largely imported from quite a long way away, and then obviously then, you know, then if it's not, that kind of brings you into the fracking debate. Um, so it's not green, and obviously it's really expensive. Um, of, in the last year, um, energy bills have gone up 152 pounds. Um, 100 pounds of that is due to the wholesale price of gas alone. Um, so relying on gas exposes us to huge price volatility, um, which is always passed on to customers and you know, in these increasingly austere times, um, considerably enhancing fuel poverty. So um, we pick gas because it's the new battleground and we feel, I mean I feel personally that the energy sector is a really interesting one to be to be campaigning on at the moment because there is there is interesting traction around the idea of um, you know a renewable energy system and what does that look like and there's quite high um, high profile um, support for this. I mean, what's interesting is um, wh when your kind of message is being echoed by you know some parts of the government and some big companies, you're you know that is kind of an interesting <coughs> position for an activist to, to be in, but. Um, it's interesting that there's lots of different voices coalescing around this idea of decarbonising our energy system as a very sensible first step in, you know, wider decarbonisation. Um, so, um, oh shit, what next? Um, so, 
Oh, and what were the consequences of that? Sorry, this, um, I didn't look at the clock, but it's probably more than five minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so what happened as a result? Um, we, uh, we all got very smelly and very cold um, <coughs> and slightly mad. Um, but it wasn't as stressful as I thought it was going to be. Um, uh, so we came down, uh, it's up in Nottingham. We, um, we all pled, um, we all pled guilty at the first opportunity. Um, there was a really tense, there was a really tense discussion um, that happened around our, our pleading, which was probably the worst day of my life because some people didn't want to plead. Um, some people wanted to plead not guilty and see if they could get away with it. But obviously the big problem that we had was um, the EDF um, civil action they decided to take against us. Um, and we'd had this quite funny thing where, you know, because we're getting letters from EDF's lawyers and we assumed it was an injunction. And so everyone's like, don't, no, don't, don't read your letters because they can't, if they haven't served it to you, you can't do it. So I'm like, oh, definitely not reading that. Throw that straight away. No, I, you cannot serve an injunction on me, my friend. And then like three weeks later, someone who had a house and was a bit worried and was like, guys, have you, has anyone read those letters? And everyone's like, no. They're like, oh, we're being sued for for £3.5 million. Pounds. We're like, what? And then a couple of weeks later, they upped it to £5 million. Pounds. Um, and so that was a really interesting situation we found ourselves in. And I think especially around um, at the time when we were pleading, um, so the press wouldn't talk about the injunction while before we pled, while those court proceedings were still going on. Um, and so basically it was a decision, you know, we have to, as a group, we have to all plead guilty so we can talk about this injunction because if this if we don't say anything then these guys are going to go ahead with this and that is going to be a well i mean we'd be bankrupt we'd be paying edf a fraction of our salary for the rest of our lives it would be you know it was a massive it was a deterrent um you know they make they make five million pounds every afternoon in profit um or every day or something it's a very short amount of time and um and then something really amazing happened um, which was um, one of the one of the girls who's up there. Their um, her parents launched a petition on Change.org, and sixty four thousand people signed it, um, and that was really great. Yeah. Um, and and then EDF ADF's lawyers came back to our lawyers, having been very 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 aggressive in the off. You know, just being like, we are going to do you. They came back with a tail between your legs, being like, please, will you? We will promise to drop the damages if you'll agree to an injunction. Um, and although it's not great to have agreed to an injunction, it, it, we're not being sued. So that's really that was really great news, and I think a really good precedent for protest in general and showing that you know big companies can't get away with you know throwing their weight and their money around and people won't stand for it. So that was really brilliant that all those people you know that was a huge boost in our publicity as well. Um, and so then, um, so that happened, which was really great. We've still got the um, criminal proceedings going on, um, and the sentences we're expecting from that range from, um, well, we don't know what the minimum is, but some people will probably be um, be doing some time, um, just because of their quite significant records. Um, and this, our court case was going to be in March. Um, but it had to got postponed because it was industrial action in the courts, which is you know, which is great. Go the courts. <laughs> I mean, it's very inconvenient for us, but you know we're on their side, so it's fine. Um, so that is now happening uh, on the sixth of June, um, and it's going to be a vigil held at the headquarters um, of EDF uh, in London um, as the first people spend their first night in prison. Um, so it'd be really great if people could kind of come along to that and. Um, that the um, the other thing that was um, so there was a lot of people that signed up to do that originally just before it got moved so that was unfortunate. The other thing that was launched as a kind of side thing was um, EDF had announced this conference about people power on May the first, and obviously you know that was um, that was silly. Uh, <laughs> they've now cancelled that <laughs> because of the. Um, well, they, I don't think they called it. People. Oh, no, no, they called it, what do they call it? Let's, let's, talk, let's talk power. power. Uh, let's talk power, yeah. 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 There was, a, there was an, an action. <laughs> on the 1st of May. There was an action on the 1st of May um, called People Power, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And um, and so as a result, they've had to cancel that and move that, and they've been doing that later in the year because they were scared of what was going to happen. 
Um, so that was funny. And then the final thing is obviously the reclaiming power, which is really big and really exciting. Um, and we're going back to West Burton um, to let them have it. Um, so that will be the final um, final weekend in, or no, the 17th, 20th of August. Um, it's, um, you know, climate count back again. Um, and so that should be a really, really good event. And I think hopefully a really nice event to bring climate activists together and to kind of get talking and, you know, plan more actions. So if anyone's interested in kind of being involved in organising that at all or has got time to put in, then give me your email addresses and I will pass them on to people. And so I will shuffle that. Okay. Thanks very much.